Hello everyone, this is Leo, and you are watching Security Talk. So let's get started. The first news that we're going to be talking about today is from InfoSecurity. They say that brute force password flaw could affect millions of application users both on iOS and Android. So before we get into this particular news, I would like to just briefly state what is a brute force attack. There are different ways in which hackers try to break through security and try to steal login credentials and get access to restricted areas and brute force is a very effective method although a very time-taking method so brute force as the name suggests basically means that the hacker or the machine used by the hacker is going to try out all the possible combinations in order to finally get the correct one so let's say you have a username and a password for any login website or application anywhere so what a brute force attack is going to do is let's say they know your username starts with a particular letter or they know that your password is eight digits long or eight characters long and if they have some information they are going to put that into some kind of I mean they don't have to do this manually there are tools that will do this for you and the only thing that is stopping you is basically computer power so they're going to try all the different possible combinations pretty much every key on the keyboard in every place and that is how they will finally get the correct combination now there are different methods to prevent brute force attacks like if there is a captcha system that way a machine cannot continuously keep attacking the particular server or the gateway with different login information it's going to be blocked after let's say three tries so obviously unless they're insanely lucky and they got the right guess the first time in which case they would have cracked everything but that that doesn't happen they're not going to get the access to your data they're basically going to be blocked out because they cannot try as many times as they need to let's say they need to try five thousand times and you only allow them to try it for five times that way you keep hackers out but it turns out that 53 percent of the most popular Android and iOS apps that have password protected accounts do not have sufficient defenses and with the security that they have a hacker could possibly crack your login or your information or whatever your security gateway is in less than 24 days at most and the scary thing is they can even do this in like 30 minutes depending on how complicated your password is so you remember why people ask you to set those passwords with numbers characters and all sorts of things that's because it is harder to brute force a password like that let's say you just have a password called ABCD now that is going to be a very easy guess for a computer or let's say you have just numbers now that reduces the number of combinations drastically because now the computer does not have to use all the keys in the keyboard they just have to use all the combinations with the 10 number keys so that reduces the number of possible combinations and anything that you do like if you just use characters if you just use symbols it'll it is going to drastically reduce that number but if you use a combination of all these things like characters numbers then obviously they're going to have to go through a lot of combinations so that's why we have complicated passwords but you know no matter what password you put if given sufficient time any machine is going to crack it so it's just a matter of time of course it's impractical if it takes two years to do that but in this case that is not what is going on they can actually crack it in a very reasonable amount of time which is why this is a concern so moving along to the next issue we're going to go on a very funny one here that is from F-Secure so Nowadays, we're getting a ton of these fake customer support calls and things like that. I, we talked about this. In fact, uh, 
in the last security talk with my IT tech, I did actually discuss this issue. And nowadays, they're even calling Mac and iOS users before they were just talking to Windows users. Now, typically, who these people are, they're just, you know, call operators or, you know, different kind of employees, most probably somewhere in India. And what they're going to do is they'll pretend to be Apple support or Microsoft support or some, you know, technician and they're going to charge you to basically do nothing or steal data from your computer so they're going to contact you and say hey you've got hackers on your system or hey you've got crashes there's there's a problem with your operating system and we're going to fix it but of course you need to pay us for that so scam I mean that's that's what you call a scam and they're just going to take that money and then they're going to do nothing apart from let's say installing spyware on your system so they can keep track of you and maybe you know ask you for more money later on but typically they just do nothing and they just take your money and uh, that's just a disgrace I mean it's it's really sad to see people doing this for a living and uh, they've almost turned it into an industry so you know, before at least they were spending their own telephone bills and calling people. Now what they're doing is they're setting out, you know, different kinds of um, browser exploits and things like that. And what's happening is, let's say you go to a page like this, iosclean.com. Let's see if this still works. iosclean.com. This is going to be so interesting if it does. Well, there you go. Google Chrome blocks it. Yeah, let's still try to visit that infected website. This should be interesting. Let's see if it's still up. Well, typically what happens on such websites, I don't know if it's still working or not, but they're going to block your browser and you'll get a pop-up window that you can't close and it's just going to say, call this number. Oh, there you go. Ah, it's still up. So, wonderful demonstration here. <laughs> so, call this number, people, and get your computer infected if you like. 1 855. Uh, I'm not going to read this. So, basically, this is what happens, and this, this kind of gets stuck, or the browser window gets stuck. They use some kind of exploit to do that. Or sometimes they just don't do anything, they just rely on the dumbness of the users to get their money but whatever the case this is typically what happens and if you call this number they're just going to take your money and give you nothing or in the best case scenario give you some spyware have fun there you go you can close this but thankfully Chrome Google Chrome has a very nice feature called prevent this page from creating additional dialogues so if you do that it's not going to be able to you know lock up your browser but that's not a feature that's available with every browser I don't think Safari has any such feature so Apple users are screwed and they're basically targeting iOS so you know if you're on a mobile device I don't know what's gonna happen but it's it's really annoying thankfully Chrome has already got a fix for this so that's our second news topic let's move on let's move to drones now I'm not going to discuss this particular article that is by Kaspersky lab I guess it's written by well it's actually based on a tweet I guess by Eugenie Kaspersky their CEO but I'm not going to talk about this particular article but more about drones and security and transport and things like that in general so as we move on and as we develop more and more technology we're basically replacing all the mechanical parts and all the human driven parts and things like that with technology like I'll give you a very simple example Google self-driving cars they'll be around soon and basically there'll be cars completely automated there'll be no driver you basically just give it an instruction and it's just going to use GPS and some other technologies within the car some sensors to navigate to the destination right even now there are some you know long route trucks and things like that that are self-driven so this is a thing this is happening now the concerns when we're having a lot of 
such things, drones, airplanes that are completely automated, automated devices. Cybercrime is basically getting a lot more power. Before all you can do is basically steal data, do something to computers, but as computers take over more and more stuff, it is actually very frightening what cyber criminals can do just sitting at home. Just imagine if they could just somehow hack a uh, you know, Google self-driving car and cause it to do weird things while someone's still inside. Or, uh, you know, a lot of airplanes are completely run on computers. Of course, there's still pilots these days, but you never know what's going to happen in the future. So even a Boeing 777, you know, planes like that that are already being used by a lot of airline companies, they are completely automated. They've got really big computer systems that do most of the piloting and flying and maintaining altitude and things like that and the pilot just basically sits there and sets the instructions but imagine if someone could hack that and you know then it's a nightmare scenario you can basically hijack a plane without even being inside it you don't need to go up with a gun to the pilot to hijack a plane anymore you can do that sitting on the ground and the problem is a lot of people are not aware of these possibilities they don't even take these things into consideration so I think there is a big gap in the security awareness that needs to be cleared up. Now Kaspersky here is talking about something similar here with drones and things like that. So he says that you can basically hack a drone for less than $400 in an hour. And considering the power of a drone, the things you can do with it, you can basically spy on lots of things. Some of them even have weapons on board if you're talking about the military one so it's it's really frightening that so much of the technology that we're using can be hacked by people just sitting with a computer you don't need to have a gun you don't need to have a rocket launcher to do you know crazy and terrible things anymore you can basically just do it with a mouse and keyboard and a powerful enough CPU so that is definitely a concern for the future so I really hope people start getting more aware of these possibilities as our technology develops the security also has to develop at the same rate. And not just that, I also feel that no matter how advanced our technology is and how much we depend on computers, we should always have some kind of analog fail-safe system so that we shouldn't have a scenario where there's a person and the person is not in control and the machine is in control. And although the person's there, he can't do anything about it because the machine has full control. I don't think any such scenario should be there. Even when we're using technology, there should always be some kind of fail switch or something like that and some kind of analog system that can be used in emergency situations. Well, let's move on to the next topic that is basically hijacking of emails. Just because an email is from a friend or from some person that you know does not necessarily mean that it's legit anymore because emails are being hijacked people are taking over these things and they are using it for things like this so in this case what's happened is somebody has received an email like this sorry to bother you with this but I'm in an urgent visit somewhere you know some remote place obviously where you can't go and to see someone who's very sick and you know to do some kind of treatment or surgery we need a ton of money we need 8000 USD and of course I'm a very nice person and I'm very generous so I spent uh, 5200 USD but you know sadly I'm out of cash I spent this much but I, I don't have any more so could you help me out of course I'll return it to you <laughs> big joke so y you get a email like this and um, so let's say it's it's actually from one of your family members most likely you will listen to them isn't it I mean how do you know if if the email of a family member or a friend is hijacked unless they tell you you really have no way of knowing and I know a lot of people take their online accounts very lightly and don't do that some people have like five accounts and they don't even know you know the password to half of them if you have a situation like that, you can always end up uh, with a lot of trouble, like in this case. So if, you, if you're not in control of all your accounts, you should definitely tell people who are your friends and family 
so that they're aware that it's it's not actually you who is operating those accounts if you lose an account if, if it gets hijacked if you're unable to access it don't just forget about it some people are like hey this account is not working let me just create a new one especially people who are not you know that frequent online but then again somebody else might be using that account and you, you might put your friends and family in trouble not just with this kind of spam emails but with malware all sorts of things and unless you know the source is bad there's no way of doing anything because even a security expert like me if i get an email from my dad or from my friends i i, I can't do anything about it there's no way to tell that the account has been hijacked unless they tell me or unless i can obviously like in this email i can spot some things that do not sound like any of my friends would tell me so that is just another word of advice that's going to be it for this video i hope you enjoyed it it was a short one i didn't cover too many topics but i wanted to really put some messages through i hope you enjoyed this uh, episode give me a like if you did and subscribe to the pc security channel for more stay informed stay secure